We've been waiting a while for Lexus to show its first ever plug-in hybrid. Well, it's finally here. Here's the 2022 Lexus NX 450H+. I'm outside of Phoenix, Arizona with one special Lexus. This is the NX 450H+. Here in America, you'll be able to get it in two different flavors starting at around 55,000 US dollars. That is of course before the federal tax credit of $7,500. But this is the F-Sport edition uh, of the 450H Plus. You can, you can also get it uh, with the non-F-Sport. Now they're only gonna be totally decked out. This one's a little bit unique because it's a pre-production model. So there's some things on the interior that are a little bit different. Uh, but the, the F-Sport grill is a little bit revised on this 2022 it's still that mesh pattern uh, this time it has butterflies smashed into it but uh it is it is still reminiscent of other f-sport grills we've seen in the past from lexus fog lights tucked in under here then we have a silver lip down at the bottom and a black glossy surround uh, surrounding the glossy mesh pattern grill now the daytime running lights are now infused into the headlamps sitting right above the triple beam led headlamps uh, previously, there was uh, a separation between the daytime and the nighttime running lights. Now they're kind of in the same module. We have uh, paint matched wheel arches, which is unique to the F Sport models. And then the F Sport also has these unique 20 inch glossy black wheels. Uh, 20 inch wheels are going to be the only wheels you see probably on the NX 450H here in America, at least for a really, really long time. This paint color is just insane. What do you guys think? USB 2.0 looks really, really good. And we'll finish this walk around and get in the back or get in the interior here in a little bit, uh, which is very unique for this pre-production model. So on the back, pretty clean, no exhaust tips. I mean, actually there's a dual exhaust on this model. It's very indiscreet, it's down there. How about I zoom in for you guys? There, there's one and there's the other. So 450H plus, that is what denotes it on the outside compared to like the 350 F Sport. Other than that, it's exactly the same on the outside, but we need to get on the inside of this beautiful brand new F Sport Lexus plug-in hybrid. Getting on the inside of the NX digital latch, door opens up essentially for you. You just have to pull it. There's no mechanical handle. This is how you get out of the vehicle by pushing this. And uh, we have kind of like this unique aluminum trim here. Usually there's a Mark Levinson speaker right here if you have that uh, option. Apparently this vehicle, the way it's equipped does not. Now this has unique seats. As far as I'm aware, the 2022 NX F-Sport only has red or black seats. This obviously has a white seat, which I'm guessing is uh, either pre-production, they're just playing with different colors, or you're gonna be able to see this in a special edition at some point in time. And they're very, very comfortable. Bolstering's pretty solid down here. I feel like it's a little bit looser compared to the outgoing uh, Lexus NX F Sport. But we're gonna get on the inside here. Listen to that door thud. Door thud is, is pretty good. Again, to open the door, you press this button here and it just opens for you. And then you just push the rest. If you wanna use the mechanical, you pull it twice. See, it says pull twice. And then it opens for you. Um, materials are excellent on this NX everywhere. Soft touch everywhere you see. I'm gonna turn this down real quick. Here's the climate control, which is definitely next level because it's integrated into the touchscreen for Lexus. The base screen is a nine inch screen. This is obviously the 14 inch screen. This is the top of the line. Uh, digital dual climate control as well. The knobs feel great. Power button here to turn on the car. And then behind the steering wheel, we have the seven inch optional MID, which is gonna be standard here on the plug-in hybrid, of course. Behind there is the all new uh, heads up display, 10 inch head heads up display. It's right out there at the top of the heads up displays that I've tested, it's phenomenal. And these are touch sensitive uh, controls that are also customizable, only available on uh, the vehicles that have uh, the heads up display. And you can also change what you see on the MID through these customizable buttons. So it's pretty, pretty cool. And on this side, these customizable buttons will customize uh, your, your radio, your phone, uh, communicating with the car, so your voice control. 
Uh, your volume is there as well. Love the new steering wheel. Take a, a while for some people to get used to, but I, I really enjoy it. F-Sport is now integrated into the design of the steering wheel instead of it being like a tacked on badge. So that, that looks really good. Android Auto Apple CarPlay is standard wireless now, but you can also plug it in and it'll show up here. The new navigation is super zippy. I really like it um, over there updates. And I believe it comes with a three year subscription uh, to the uh, Lexus interface. So you're able to update it uh, throughout your ownership especially if you have it as a leasing vehicle, your three-year lease, you're taken care of there. Your shifter on the F-Sport, you have dimpled texture here on the side. This isn't really a shifter. It's almost like a, a Prius knob. It's shift by wire, it's all electronic. You start in the middle, that's gonna be neutral, that's gonna be reverse, and that's gonna be drive. Now, we have some additional buttons here on the plug-in hybrid. You can switch between EV mode, hybrid mode, and automatic. And actually what I have in right now is I held this button down, it says hold the charge. So since I've been doing my walk around, I've acquired three miles of electric only range uh, because it had zero range when I got in this vehicle. So I wanna be able to test uh, what it feels like when it's on full electric mode. So I'm totally killing my fuel economy, but it's for the sake of testing the, the, the acceleration, right? Anyways, uh, Sport Plus mode is only on the F Sports models. You have adaptive dampers front and rear. You, you rear. you also have adaptive variable suspension. And when I twist this, it's gonna change the knobs for your change, the uh, display for you uh, from eco mode, normal mode, uh, sport mode, sport plus mode right there with the linear tachometer. So pre pretty cool there. Pano sunroof is not available on this vehicle. You can only have the normal sunroof. Pano sunroof not available on the plug-in hybrid F Sport. So if you want the plug-in hybrid and the panel roof, you have to give up the F Sport uh, designation and packaging there. So sorry to burst your bubble. The dash, by the way, uh, looks pretty plain. I feel like they could they could add some detail to this, but it is soft touch and it is pretty nice. I love the contrast of this white and black. Unfortunately, I don't think you'll be able to get it at launch, uh, but I do really, really like this white black. And uh, yeah, you're Armrest has some storage in there. I don't even see a light. So that's unfortunate that there, there's no light for uh, your, your objects that you have hidden in there at nighttime. Memory seats right here on the door. Oh, I better put it in park, right? And we're gonna get in the back seat. Again, digital latch for the back seats as well. Someone left their water in here. Someone left two waters in here. It wasn't me guys, I just got in it. I only have a very short amount of time with this vehicle. It's been hotly, hotly sought, uh, contested, sought after with the uh, press people here in Arizona. Two USB-C's in the back, 12 volt here, vents, glossy black around them, soft touch back on the, the back of this synthetic leather Nulex with uh, fairly high quality map pockets here. This will fold down to reveal some cup holders. So let's fold down these seats though. This isn't the electric seats where you press a button and they fold themselves up and that therefore they are not heated in this model either. So uh, storage capacity, we'll get into the back now. Leg, leg space is a little bit better than the outgoing NX, but not a whole lot in the back. All right, here we go. Opening the hatch here. Sorry about the harsh light and the shadows. I mean, it's just so beautiful. How could I not film in this area? Anyways, uh, opening up this area here is going to uh, show us some underfloor storage. Um, this was some of the routes that they, uh, you know, suggested we take, but I didn't go really on more than one of them because I got lost a couple times and I've been waiting a while for this one. Anyways, your 12 volt batteries back here, just like it is in the normal hybrid. Uh, so that's, that's where that is. And a little net there to store some of the objects that you have. And then this will just fold, fold back. I believe there's about 17%. I'll put exactly what it is, more cargo capacity compared to the outgoing model which is excellent because that's where the NX really struggled in its class was the lack of cargo capacity. Now you have plenty, and I think it's time to uh, drive this bad boy. And we're off silently in this plug-in hybrid. I have it in EV only mode after I let it sweat just like me on the outside while the engine charged the battery for about four miles. And electric mode, just like the RAV4 Prime, is not gonna provide the most brisk acceleration it's definitely quick but it's uh it's going to be limited to the maximum output of the electric system which is probably somewhere around 200 horsepower but if you click it in hybrid mode as i'm going to do right uh let's do um auto ev yes it's on auto ev i'm just going to hammer it 
<laughs> and we're going uphill and we're off to the races. You get the full fat electrification surge as well as the two and a half liter chipping in to give you the 300 horsepower. And that's why people are going to shell out money for this vehicle for two reasons. Uh, it's Even though it costs 10 grand more, uh, you get it roughly 70 more horsepower or so, uh, maybe 60 to 70 more horsepower, something like that. But since it's, most of it's electrified, it definitely feels more noticeable. And then also, you get uh, 37 miles of electric range, which is gonna help people out immensely on their commutes. Man, if I had 37 miles of plug-in range, I would never have to use gas to take my kids to school and back. Like, that's pretty darn cool. And I think that's a huge selling point for a lot of people. But unfortunately, it comes in at about 10 grand more uh, than a well-equipped hybrid or a turbo model, which both of them are great. I enjoyed both of them. The 350 is definitely more performance oriented compared to the hybrid. I really liked the hybrid. So make sure to watch both of my videos on the 350 F Sport as well as the 350 H non F Sport, which by the way, you can't get the F Sport and the 350 hybrid here in America, but this one, obviously the 450H does. The 350H might be my favorite vehicle. It comes in at a little bit cheaper, even than the turbo, and uh, here we have this vehicle sitting as, as the, the, like the Halo product. Lexus is expecting anywhere from about 10%, somewhere around there as the take rate for this plug-in hybrid. And when I heard that, I initially thought that was kind of high because we've never seen a plug-in hybrid on the Lexus before, but it depends on what part of the country you're in. Um, you know, when I sold a lot in Nebraska, uh, I don't expect a lot of them to be, have a, a high take rate of the plug-in hybrid. It might not even be available in certain parts of the country until, I mean, this whole chip shortage and micro or supply chain management is figured out. So this vehicle, 55K starting, you might be able to get the $7,500 tax re rebate, which is going to help out uh, some of you guys who can take advantage of that. Uh, most of us will probably be more than happy with the 250, which I haven't driven because it's not available here. But now this uh, this vehicle, the way it's equipped, has, it's strange because the interior you're not going to be able to get. It does have the rear view camera. It does have 360 view camera, which gives you front cross traffic alert, uh, as well as uh, assist with turning in the lanes. But it also, uh, this doesn't have Mark Lev in it, which is a big head scratcher. Like to me, you got to got to get Mark Lev if you're going higher. Uh, with all these extra options. But I'm waiting for some open road here where we can test out the uh, electric system. What is that, a Roadrunner? Is that two, what are those things? I'm, I'm in a, a foreign country, this is not South Florida. Anyways, we do have Sport Plus mode, uh, which is gonna give you a stiffening of the steering wheel, more aggressive responsiveness of the, uh, the engine combination here. And uh, it's going to stiffen up the active damper. So you have adaptive variable suspension, uh, you have front and rear performance dampers in all the F-Sport models here in the United States that I'm aware of. There is a stop sign up, up ahead, and I believe there's a road where we can probably turn and burn a little bit right here. This will be fun, so let's flip it into Sport Plus mode. We still have three miles of electric range. All right, let's get into it and 100% punch. <laughs> okay, well, speed limit's 35. Well, there's 50. Anyways, yeah, it's quick. It's really, really quick for uh, a crossover in this segment. And right now, I'm just uh, cruising in EV mode. It's in hybrid auto EV. It's in auto EV hybrid, so it's choosing to be in electric mode only because it knows I'm at a steady state. But I can override that. I can put it into EV only mode just by cycling this button. And of course, I don't notice anything there, but it does tell me I have three miles to empty and it says I have 324 miles of the hybrid vehicle range. Obviously that is uh, gasoline based, but yeah, very efficient either way you cut it. But when I'm filming in 5K, my GoPro, the go new GoPro 10, it doesn't like it, especially with the heat here in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. So we, we need to wrap this up really quick. The 450H Plus is a new era for Lexus Electrified. Uh, they've had a lot of hybrids in the past, but now they, they're bringing the performance with it as well with this plug-in hybrid as well as efficiency. So uh, you just gotta pay a little bit for it. Uh, with the $55,000 starting price, I wouldn't be surprised if you see some of these over 60,000 when you add all the options like the Mark Levinson and whatnot. Lexus has done everything they could with the exterior and the interior. I think the exterior looks better than the outgoing model. The interior 
is higher quality materials everywhere around. And that's saying something because Lexuses all have pretty decent interiors. So the new interiors is really good. Uh, I do appreciate the large screen. I mean, yeah, the nine inch screen is gonna be fine with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, the heads up display is a home run. One of the best heads up displays I've tested. Uh, steering wheel feels great in my hands and they've added more cargo cargo space and then you have lots of different powertrains a 200 horsepower uh, four cylinder for those who want front wheel drive or they don't care maybe they don't drive a whole lot so they wouldn't take advantage of the hybrid powertrains or things like that and i totally get it so i'm glad we have more options from the 200 horsepower naturally aspirated front wheel drive base model all the way up to this full fat 300 plus horsepower plug-in hybrid with almost 40 miles of electric range. My favorite, I think, is, is the non-plug-in hybrid, the 350H. Due to the fact that it's cheaper than the turbo, it gets nearly 40 miles per gallon. I think the responsiveness is there. It's very, very, very quiet. Uh, this one, of course, is just uh, more sophistication than I need in my life. But how about we gun it one last time with this 300 horsepower model? I'm just gonna come to a complete stop, no one in front of me. And go. Yep. Oh, I'm still in EV mode? What? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> it did not like that. Did not like that. You had that initial torque, it's like, here we go. And then the, the electric power just kind of fades after a while. So uh, we're going to go back to a uh, hybrid mode here. And uh, we're gonna go into Sport Plus which we already were in. Okay, and go. There we go, engine kicks on. There's the power that I wanted. And uh, uphill even, and there's 65, 67. It just keeps pulling. It pulls well even after 60. But uh, there you go, last last pull or last acceleration. There's those weird birds again. Might be roadrunners, I don't know. They're weird looking birds. They almost look like desert quails. Anyways, I'm gonna end it there. Signing out from Phoenix, Arizona, and the first ever plug-in hybrid for Lexus. It's about time. We know they're capable of amazing things on the electrified and hybrid end. And it's finally, it feels so good to finally have this option. Uh, like I said, it's expensive, but it's been worth the wait. And this new NX is gonna sell like hotcakes for Lexus. Uh, this segment's very competitive. We just got the refresh of the new RDX, the 2022 refresh of the RDX. Uh, the Genesis GV70 is a really excellent vehicle. I have that vehicle waiting for me back home when I get there uh, to review it. So uh, signing out again from the Phoenix, Arizona area in the, the desert wilderness. It's so beautiful. I'm going to put it back into normal mode uh, here. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the comments below. I know there's so many questions that you guys have that I wasn't able to answer. Uh, because I had a, such a short t amount of time here in the plug-in hybrid. Uh, but anyways, signing out again for the millionth time. Thank you so much for watching. Like the like, the like button. <laughs> Subscribe for more Lexus uh, news and reviews. Toyota, all the Asian automakers you guys know at this point. All right, peace out. Thank you.